Now there's another reason why we put this in the carboxylic acid derivative category, um, which is remember, all the carboxylic acids, when you hydrolyze them, turn into what? To, um, when you hydrolyze a carboxylic acid, what type of functional group does that create? What's the product of doing a hydrolysis on any type of carboxylic acid? On a carboxylic acid? Oh, it's derivative. I think I, yeah, I've been misspeaking. Okay. Uh, what was I trying to say? I was trying to say what happens when you hyd hydrolyze a carboxylic acid derivative? You get a carboxylic acid. That's right. You wouldn't. It doesn't make sense to hydrolyze a carboxylic acid because you just get the same thing. Okay. Yeah. You get a carboxylic acid. Okay. If you we already just saw that if you hydrolyze amides, you get carboxylic acids. And last time we saw that if you hydrolyze esters or acyl halides or anhydrides, you get carboxylic acids or sometimes carboxylates depending on the conditions. Well. This is called a carboxylic acid derivative because it also hydrolyzes to form a carboxylic acid. Um, it would be worth knowing the mechanism for this, but it's not as important as the other mechanisms, and to save time, we will skip it. Okay. All right, so we're just going to go over how to predict the product here without worrying about the mechanism. I think you actually briefly saw a discussion of this in one of, one of the other videos, but didn't spend too much time on it. Okay, so this will be nitrile hydrolysis. So this is simply, now you can see this is hydrolysis because we are adding water. Um, and uh, you can see this is under acidic conditions. Uh, it looks like this also uh, requires heat. That's how it was drawn in the lecture notes. We are simply going to turn, so all we're going to do is we're going to turn the nitrile carbon into a carboxy carbon. We're simply going to turn the nitrile carbon into a carboxy carbon. So I'm going to use the redraw and modify technique. The redraw and modify technique. First of all, I've simply redrawn the original picture, and now I'm going to modify it so that it looks like a carboxylic acid. <clears throat> okay. Well, what we said we were going to do is simply change the nitrile carbon into a carboxy carbon. Well, if you skip the mechanism, that's very simple. Now, this is how I would turn the nitrile carbon into a carboxy carbon, just to make that a little clearer. Maybe I'll put in some numbers here. So we've turned the number one carbon from a nitrile carbon into a carboxy carbon. Since we're skipping the mechanism, that's becoming right. very simple. Okay, that's all there is to it. You don't add any carbons and you don't drop any carbons, because obviously we're not adding any carbons here. It's the same number of carbons, it's just the nitrile carbon is turned into a carboxy and carbon. And what is that other, uh, that line there? Below Which the carbon? This? Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to say that's the number one. <laughs> I just wanted to indicate what's happened oh, with the number one carbon. The number one carbon has turned from a nitrile carbon into a carboxy carbon. Okay. Your instructor indicated this takes two equivalents of water. And I guess I can kind of see how that would happen, even though we're not going through the whole mechanism, because we have to know there were two oxygens. Okay, so we won't go through the details of the mechanism, but uh, this is the product here. <coughs> By the way, uh, what type of functional group is this? That's right. Now, there's one more thing we have to consider. Under these conditions, should our final product be a carboxylic acid or a carboxylate? A carboxylic acid. So we're done. Okay. This is the correct final product. But under basic conditions, we wouldn't be done. Now we would need to remember to deprotonate this. Uh, because this is another hydrolysis that works under either acidic or basic okay. conditions. Every hydrolysis that we've seen that requires acid or, uh, acid or base would work under either, either of those conditions. Okay. Let's give a name to this compound. Acidic acid? Good. IUPAC would be phenyl ethanoic acid, but this is much more common, so this is a good name. Phenyl acetic acid. Two carbons plus the phenyl substituent. We don't, you could say it's two phenyl acetic acid, but that's not really necessary because there's no room for the phenyl in the number one, so this is fine. Good. That, that's a good name. All right, well, this is just another type of hydrolysis we have to learn. This is the one type of hydrolysis where we haven't covered the mechanism. Okay. This is in the lecture notes, if you're curious about the mechanism.
All right, now again, um, to save time, we won't go through the mechanism. Okay. I just want to draw the product. Um, in, in most ways, this is going to be pretty similar to the previous example. So let's see if we can go straight to the product. So uh, do we need to account then what happens to our nitrogen? That's a good question. I don't think about that. Uh, not really. We can talk about that, but let's not worry okay. about that right now. Huh. Very good. We can show the sodium counter ion here. That's good. Okay, we haven't gone through the mechanism, but we know that we should be turning the, well, what's the name of this functional group? Just the general name of that functional group? Um, the nitrile. Nitrile, yeah. Nitrile. We want to turn the nitrile carbon into a carboxy carbon. But it's good that you remember that under basic conditions, it really turns into a carboxylate carbon. Uh, yeah. I think that ultimately the sodium is going to turn into a, uh, the nitrogen is going to turn into an amine. Okay. Um, it simply gains more and more protons until eventually it turns into an amine. Mm -hmm. if, you, uh, if you go through the mechanism, you'll see that happening, but uh, we won't worry about that, all right? And this is called uh, nitrile hy hydrolysis? Yeah. Now, we just did uh, nitrile hydrolysis under basic conditions, and earlier we did nitrile hydrolysis under acidic conditions. Yeah, and uh, that was a good question. The nitrogen does keep gaining protons and turn, turns into an amine. Or actually, until it turns into ammonia. So it doesn't have any carbon, so it's just going to turn into either ammonia or ammonia. Mm -hmm. In these conditions, ammonia. we get ammonia or ammonia. Ammonia. Because these are basic conditions. So actually, even though we haven't gone through the mechanism, maybe it's good to know that this is what happens to the nitrogen. So you can see it has to gain a, a lot of protons, but that's not surprising because it has to lose a lot of bonds to the carbon. So the, the mechanism takes a while because you have to do all those protonations. So we'll talk about that. Uh, try giving a name to this. What would be the suffix here? Um, nitro. Right. How many carbons does this have? It has um, 10. Uh, 11. Right. We have to include this as one of the carbons. We have to include this as one of the carbons. So uh, you might not remember what the prefix is for 11 carbons. That doesn't come up too much. Yeah, I don't remember. That's undec. Undec. This is un. Un dec. Dec is 10 carbons, so un dec is one more than 10. Uh, there's no double bonds, so it's un dec an. Mm -hmm. uh, but remember that when the suffix starts with a consonant, you don't use an, you use an. So for pronunciability, this is un dec an nitrile. Uh, so what would this be? That would be um, decron. Oh wait. <laughs> um, dec and O8. Good. We've seen that carboxylates have the O8 suffix like esters. In this case, we don't use an E because the suffix starts with a vowel. Whereas here we use the E because it starts with a consonant. So that's probably not a big deal, but so for some reason that pleases me. Okay, so. Now let's say that we took this and then added this. Draw what the product would be now. To save time, we can, uh, yeah. So let's draw what the product would be if we take this and add this. Carboxylic form. Good. That's good. Sometimes things are simple. Seldom, but unless it's all relative. It shouldn't surprise us. Here we have a strong acid. Well, this strong acid wants to protonate somebody, and this is a good candidate to get protonated. 
Um, we don't need to worry about this acting like a nucleophile, because even if it did, it would just turn it into a carboxylic acid. So we'll just replace one OH with another OH. So we can just protonate this. Uh, incidentally, what's going to happen to the NH3 under these conditions? Um, it's also going to get protonated. So then it'll be uh, ammonium. NH4 plus, good. He might show that then it would have a chloride counter ion. So this would be ammonium chloride. Okay. What's the name of this compound? Um, Umdek anoic acid. Yeah, good. Umdek anoic acid. 